Welcome to the Celtic Way Sit Down with me, Tony Haggerty. And as you can see, I'm joined by a guest to talk me through his top five Celtic moments. And that guest is none other than Sony Award winning comedian Des McLean. Although these days I don't know if it's Des McLean or Bertie Old or Tommy Sheridan. He's a man of many yeah. talents, but one of the most outstanding comedians on the circuit. He also happens to be a big Celtic supporter. And Des, for the next however long it takes him to talk us through his top five Celtic moments, will be here to join us. He's the latest in the series. And nobody is more delighted than me to welcome Des McLean. So give it up, ladies and gentlemen, Des McLean. And uh, yeah, we have formed something of a friendship, Des, over the past few years. Years since I met you through a mutual friend who we're just talking about there off air, Pat mm-hmm. Rollink, uh, who is recovering from uh, just having had a stroke. So we say get well soon to Pat. But Des, how are you? And first and foremost, welcome and thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Thank you for that amazing introduction that I emailed to you last night. That's lovely. <laughs> Exactly. You told me exactly what to say. <laughs> uh, you always give me a, a. You always speak very, very kindly, very highly. Uh, very good. Of course, we've been very good friendship over the last few years. The Hendrik Larson moment. We'll talk about that later with you sitting there yeah. like a couple of these schoolboys going. Ah, get back. That, that, that was a, a, one of these surreal moments. Um, yes, you're sitting down, uh, talking to a stand up. I'm standing up. If that's okay, you know me. I'm always standing up. This is Harry's bar. Anybody's just <laughs> yeah. this is my converted garage. It's a pub, Harry's Bar. It's not at all. It's all the football memorabilia. It's just got Messi and uh, the, the sign. It's even got for any boxer fans. There you know, <laughs> Harley, please the right. I come with the shot of butter. You ain't got no shot at the title, and that's final. You're a disgrace to the sport. Anyway, the Amazon guys just walking by going, I'll, I'll keep walking. Right. So, uh, yes, I'm really looking forward to this. This is a bit like. Desi's Celtic Desert Island Discs. As, as Desert Island Discs in a, in a Celtic format. And before we start, guys, if you enjoy the Celtic Way Sit Down and you enjoy the daily morning briefings, then I implore you to look at the ticker tape running along the bottom as we do every day. Subscribe to the Celtic Way website. It helps us uh, produce these free videos and you also support top quality football journalism, covering the club you love in the process. That's all for... Uh, the click of a button www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe that's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe and the current deal we're doing is £4 for four months so that's the business end of it taken care of Des we are now going to and this takes as long as it takes and there'll be diversions along the way there'll be spaghetti junctions along the way because you are (laughs) in the company of a very funny man ladies and gentlemen and a good friend of mine as well and I'm delighted to say that the one thing that's come of all of this throughout our uh, Celtic involvement and just involvement with mutual friends is the friendship yourself and myself have developed there. And I wouldn't swap that for anything. And I was delighted when you agreed to appear on this. Listen, 50 quid's 50 quid. So, um... <laughs> Correct. <laughs> in, any, in any comes. <laughs> one thing with me is, unlike yourself, I wouldn't get any cheap plugs in early doors. However... <laughs> <laughs> I just I ripped this off a bus shelter across the road. No, uh, we'll talk about it uh, later on. For anyone who's just tuning in, Bendit Liberty is back for the final time. If you thought it was a tearjerker before, Bendit Liberty is back, back in its spiritual home, the Pavilion Theatre, where the Lisbon Lions would go many years ago in February. So that's your Christmas sorted out and the TKB Valentine's weekend. Sorry, uh, Tony, I just had to get that plug in. That I, but I know you're a big no. fan. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, I was very close to the man as well himself. Uh, so, yeah, force of nature, I once described them as, and you said it's probably the most perfect in that description, but we'll talk about Bertie, no yeah. doubt. Now, top five Celtic moments. We do it in reverse order, Des. That's the, the way we do it. So mm. we'll just launch into number five in your top five Celtic moments, if you well, can tell I us will. about that. These I've tried to put these in a kind of order, but with Celtic, there is no real order, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, it is some. It's a bit yeah. like it's a bit like you asking me which are five favourite songs. Next week, I might think of five, 
other different ones. I might think yeah. there'll be other moments that you could be sitting there going, oh, wait a minute, that was pretty awesome. So there's been, we're sitting here in a really good position that there's been so many that, that you're spoiled, you're stuck. However, I've tried to get these into a, a wee kind of a running order and I've mixed it about, then mixed it about again. And some <laughs> of it is is kind of relevant to my journey uh, as a Celtic supporter. I was brought up in the East End of Glasgow. Uh, I was born in a place called Rikese, a lovely little uh, seaside village just uh, uh, off off the Easter House, Cathamlock, uh, <laughs> So, but then I made some money and I moved to Black Hill. People normally laugh when I say that, but that was the truth. <laughs> so I was always a Rikese, Black Hill. My mum and dad were from Black Hill, Garngad, that whole neck of the woods, you know, big, big Celtic area as well. We returned to Garngad when Martin O'Neill uh, clinched the treble for a big party. We'll talk about that in a wee while. So uh, that what a day that was. Now, um, so I was brought up. So people say, why are you not supporting your local team? So Celtic were my local team. You know, like, I was just along yeah. just down the road. Quite literally, yeah. Yeah, I was just down the road from Parkhead. You could walk it from like Proven Mill, Black Hill, easily on a, on a Saturday morning. So I remember getting taken to, to Celtic Park when I was a wee boy, a, a wee boy, a wee toddler and all that. And, and you weren't allowed to go to any Celtic Rangers games, but you went along to testimonials. And one of my early memories was, this is not number one, but it's building up to it, okay, was going to like, uh, I remember going to Jimmy Johnson and Bobby Lennox testimonial. And I was a wee, I was only a wee boy, but Celtic beat Man United 4 0. And I remember coming back and I was thinking, Celtic must be some team, you know. You didn't realise it was just a wee testimonial and stuff like that. But all those kind of things, heavily anti Celtic, and it was just always when I was delivering papers and all that, it was at the team group and all that, the evening times is always like, you know, in the back of the, uh, the paper and all that and back in the days, you know. But, but so this fast forward right to the first <clears throat> um, season that I remember going to every game, pretty much every game, first time I joined a supporters bus in the East End, the Celtic Cross, that'll give you a wee clue. And it was a centenary year. We went every game. Now, this was a time when Rangers had the big money, right? And we... Basically, they went back for Billy McNeil, obviously, and you're thinking, are we really going to, is it, you know, are we going to do anything this year? Because they had signed Terry Butcher and all that, and they just came back and they'd won the league. Davy Hay had been sacked. David Proven had to retire from football at a young age. We'd lost Murdo McLeod. Brian McClare went to Man U. Mo Johnson left, sorry. Um, and the <laughs> Mac and Ali. And, and those, you know. So who did we bring in? Uh, Chris Morris, Billy Stark. We were hardly box office, right? Let's be honest, right? But what we did have that year was Paul McStay in unbelievable form. It was it was the play of the year of, of sports writers. You probably yeah. you know that that year. It was incredible with McAvaney playing out his skin, the best the best uh, striker that year. But we'd also big Roy Aitken and all these guys, you know. And, and by the way, guys like Morris and Rogan and all that were amazing that season, you know. So you, what happened? We won the double. I, I just remember that that was some season. And it was a bunch of players that if you look at them all, you think, this is not, you know, as I say, it's, it wasn't a box office. They were by no means a Barcelona. You know, that it was, but what they did have was fight. They had a real camaraderie, togetherness, and they wanted. And, you know, for that, <laughs> for that single season, and we big, it was just so fitting that, that Billy McNeil came back and we got that double. And you're thinking, you know, thank God that happened because we know what happened for the next few years, you know? Yeah. And yeah, uh, and it's funny because that's yeah. my first season of being in a going on a supporters bus and going to every game. Never missed a game. And as you say, at the outset, you thought this is a ragtag and bobtail team, you know, cobbled together by Big Billy. Maybe it's written in the stars. And it culminated in Big Billy saying that there's a fairy tale about this club. That's and the fairy right. tale came through the centenary season because all of those pieces of the jigsaw just kind of slotted into place, didn't they? And maybe I remember Tommy Craig saying that uh, the vital spark that was needed that season was the fact that it was a centenary season. And these guys are going to folklore as a double winning team uh, in Celtic's 100th year. And I don't think they can get any higher accolade than that, you know? It was so fitting and so, oh, it was so fortunate as well that we really wanted it. How else? You imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The centenary year. You know, if, if Rangers had been out and won a double or a treble or that, and then we and big Billy to come back, and it was you know it was an amazing season. We were winning. I remember Billy Conley was commentating on this yeah. documentary, and yeah. he was like, "It's right, it's only the ninety-three minutes. Calm down, because Celtic were like like you were never writing them off. 
you were like, oh yeah. my minute, eight, nine minutes, and the fight to the very the very end was incredible that year. It really was a triumph of the human spirit, as you say. No, I mean Billy Stark. If Celtic signed players like that just now, they'd be up in arms, right? But Billy Stark <laughs> actually won, and what he, 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 yeah. amazing season. And all these guys, what was he, 75,000, 100, not even that, I can't remember, something like that. And we like, Chris Morris, who, who were these guys? <laughs> but, but everybody, everybody to a man rose to the challenge and they were all playing absolutely the form of a life, that whole team. And if you were to look at them on paper next to, you know, as I say, they Butcher, Gary Stevens, all these guys. And the Joe Muller had a great season as well, of course, you know. Yeah. And, but when you look at that, you, you would think it wasn't the strongest Celtic squad, but oh, what they had. You know, fire in the belly. They just went for it. It was I the tiger stuff. I the tiger. It there were was. some wonderful documentaries that you see. That the one with the uh, Billy Connolly was talking to Marco Vanni, wasn't he in the jungle? That's and that was the. Uh, and he was talking about that. You know, where you see he was saying, you know, those Celtic supporters saying, "Hang on, there's two minutes to go." And it was the the manifestation of "Don't let go," you know, and get in Celtic dressed out the fire so many times. There was also that wonderful documentary. In, I've spoken about this quite a few times because I loved it. Uh, Scott Sport did it in praise of Caesar, and Ian Archer wrote it, and it was just really, really wonderful. And, and at the end, he name checks the team. We talk about it in the Dundee game, final whistle, and he says, "On the day it was Bonner, Rogus, no, uh, sorry, Bonner, Morris, Rogan, and all that." And he goes through the whole team, and he he talks about, uh, and he says a wonderful line. He says, "They say the joy." Is, and the beauty has gone out of the beautiful game. He said, but they weren't at Parkhead yesterday. And he said, Celtic have come a long way in a hundred years. He says, and and all the players were standing on the kind of above the directors. Mm-hmm. But he said, eh, we will see their likes again. And what they did was when Celtic the musical was out, so the Celtic story was out, and they did a mm-hmm. photo shoot, and they had all the players done up in the centenary kit. And then they faded, yeah, they faded it out to they were all mm-hmm. done in a black and white shot, uh, when the the first original kit, you know, in a in the hundred years, and it was a it was brilliantly done. And praise our Caesar, it's called you get it on YouTube, and I can't mm-hmm. watch that without bust it crying half the time, because I thought Ian Archer was a wonderful writer, and you know, and it was just there was mm-hmm. just that was a kind of last piece of fairy dust and magic dust. You know, as Billy Connolly said, the fairy tale about that season, that documentary was absolutely brilliant. And you watch it now and you just think, those guys will be remembered forever. They're up wow. there with the, the Lisbon Lions. You know, I know the Lisbon Lions scaled the mountain mm-hmm. of all mountains by winning European Cup. But, you know, I've spoken to a few of those Celtic players and they say that that's a wonderful thing that 1988 they'll always remember, be remembered for winning a double in the centenary year. And, and you and I, are like you flick through the roller decks in your mind and you remember every game, you remember every goal, don't you? You just it, it comes back to you like that. It really does. And remember, uh, McAvenny was saying uh, in an interview, and he said this many times, he knew, he just knew. He says, we were never getting beat with Dundee United. It doesn't matter they went, it doesn't matter how well they were playing. Yeah. And they were a really good team. Uh, Kevin Gallagher, wasn't it, that went up and scored that? Yeah, yeah, scored. And then, the great, great. And then uh, my God. Uh, for Celtic to, to pull it back as late as that. But we just knew that year. We just knew there was something, as you say, it was written in the stars. It was, as Big Billy says, and it was fitting. What a season for McNeil as well. But no, that, that was the first that was the first one. And I just thought, what a season to look back on and thank God. But Aye. guys like Chris Morris, they, he ended up playing for Republic of Ireland after that. He would never really been been the yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he wouldn't have went to some team, anybody else, you know, maybe uh, English second division or that. But the fact that that, that uh, highlighted, you know, that for him, so that that got him and other guys some call ups. But uh, and I, yeah, I don't know about you, Des, but I, I, I felt like a real supporter because I went to every game home and away. You know, I was up early for the public sales of tickets for Aberdeen and Ibrox and all that. You know, queuing up at six in the morning at Celtic Park to, to make sure you get a ticket uh, for for those important games, and you just you just felt like part of something really special, you know. Was and that what a what a, a first season to go to every game to win yeah, the double. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it could have been any better. And I still remember the laughs and all that because it was it was it was great crack. And you were going up to Aberdeen, you were going to Dundee, you were going all oh, the Motherwell, whatever, right? And it was always some laugh. All the characters on the bus, you know, and the ballots for the you know who's going to get either tickets or not, yeah. all that stuff. And it was it was amazing. And you kind of missed that. But I remember after that we were all going on the. 
the, 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 the other season that we went to every game was the horrible season. It was around about 1993-94, and we're going out there and we were getting oh we were getting pumped left, right, and centre. You know, you're watching Wayne Biggins and all that, and we were yeah. going to this save ourselves and sack the board and down the shuttles and holes and all that. But we never missed a game. We never looked at that either. So you felt mm-hmm. even you died yeah. in the world uh, supporter then as well. But that that centenary year was it was it was magical. And when you look back, it was just per- per- perfection. The I'll never forget Hamden Park. The Celtic end, and it, the yeah. sun was absolutely splitting the trees. I remember all these Scottish cups. Margaret Thatcher was there bizarrely as well. Remember? Even Thatcher could not bring us down that day. You know, I just remember oh. making like, a couple of things. With, and uh, so that was a, and uh, it was just such a, a bizarre, but I mean magical, and it was a fairy tale stuff to win the double. Yeah. And see, we'll take that any day. We. I remember going to Aberdeen in midweek and coming in the next day. And my French teacher saying to me, does your father know that you were uh, in Aberdeen <laughs> mid- midweek watching your team? I said, yes, my father knew. He took me. <laughs> she was like, well, your father can't guarantee you French O grades, can he? I said, <laughs> I, I said, no, but he's not been derelict in his duty. He's taking no. me to watch Celtic. I got my <laughs> French O grades by the way, but there you go. <laughs> well, what made it more amazing is the fact that, let's be honest, at the start of the season, we did not think we were oh, going to yeah. win that. I mean, when they started bringing a, a England captain and internationals that out, we thought, oh no, this is it. These guys are playing hardball. And then I just thought, what are we going to do? You know, Billy Stark and all that, poor old Billy. But everybody just fitted into that, that team and into that plan. And the, mm-hmm. the never say die attitude was incredible. And you have to say, Rangers took full advantage of the fact that English clubs were banned from Europe because they signed some stellar players. You know, and that's oh, what wow. Celtic were up against. And that was the kind of start of the whole kind of Graham Sooners revolution and you did fear for Celtic but just as you say something spurred them on that season didn't it the the whole fact that they were 100 years old and even the fans singing happy birthday every, every week happy birthday to Celtic it's just, it's just <laughs> weird wasn't it Adam <laughs> Fernland did it as well yeah that's the thing you're saying happy birthday Celtic yeah. see you next year and all that yeah. so even with all that all that goodwill off the other teams and all that it was magical it was around about the same time as the, the Garden Festival remember it and was the uh, same time as, yes, because Celtic had the crest, didn't they? The, floor, the I remember that. The crest. I remember that. Brilliant stuff as well, that one. So, yes, I'm glad that you and I both agree. That was the first year you went to all the games and uh, the Centennial. I would like to move it further up, but we've got other stuff to come and it's relevant. So That's fine. It, is, is, uh, it makes number five in your entries. If that's number five, I can't wait for the next four. <laughs> Shall we go number four, Des, and see where it takes us? <laughs> Right, number four was, right, let's fast forward. Rangers won a few leagues, as we know, right? <laughs> and, right, and we stopped them from getting 10. But there was a magical moment when we we tried out a few managers that didn't work, your Barnes, their bleach, and, 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 you know, all these McCarries and, and the late Tommy Burns, God rest his soul. But then one man came and he just knew, and I, I'll never forget him standing there going, I will do everything in my power everything in my power to bring some success to this football club. And see when he said, I'm maybe paraphrasing you exactly, but it was something like that. He just stood there on you with a wee scarf and just, I will do everything in my power to bring <laughs> some success to this football club. Absolutely. What can I say? You know, absolutely great player. You know, Henry Larson, you know, when I came here, I said he was a good player. I was wrong. He was absolutely incredible. So when I saw, you know how that way you see somebody and you just go, that's that's the man. This is the man. That this is the man. And it's and we all just knew. You, you would just go. This is Martin O'Neill. This is yeah. a match she, in heaven. She and when he sat on the stairs, uh, yeah. Des, all you can hear is some guy saying, "That's all we want, Martin." Yeah, that's <laughs> right. this, our lone voice. That's all we want. That's but all we want, Martin. That. You know. He didn't come. Yeah, he no. didn't come. Through, all guns blazing, going. I'm going to win. He just said it in such a. You know, it was just so, you know, selective. And you know, I will bring some success to this football club. And you thought, aye, and then some. You trusted you know, him, didn't you? That was the thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's like, you, you went, we, we're with him. This yeah. is the man. This, yeah. he knows what he's doing. And, and he's he's not just here, you know, hitting his, like, some salesman talking a good game. And we just had your McCarries and all that, right? To get Martin O'Neill. And you thought, right, what's this guy going to do? And when, when all the players tell you that he says, you know, 
are you, are you said to every player one on one, you know, Rangers are the benchmark. And are you are you happy to be number two to Rangers? He's, he's man, you know, when, when they all talk about this, Chris Sutton and all that, you know, but how much of a, a genius he was, a, a man manager, everything, you know, and he used that Rangers as the benchmark thing. He used it very cleverly. But that that was the next moment. Not not that. There's, there's things attached to it. The six two game. That was the moment where you went, oh right, Martin O'Neill's mm-hmm. here. He's here, and he is going to take us forward. And this is going to be oh, what a, you you were like really excited because you thought we had been, you know, we we had been slave mentality all these years right up to that point. Then you thought, wait a minute, we are not only going to go toe to toe. We are here to win. We are here. This is this this guy stepping up to the plate here, and you just thought we're we're going to we're going to win. We're going to. You just knew you knew Mark O'Neill and this Celtic team. The signings he was making, you know, your Suttons and and Lennons and and you know, and we already had you know Larson and Maravchek and all that. You're thinking, oh wait a minute, you know, to slot that in with the players that he'd inherited, we we are going. We could not only you know stand toe to toe with this mob, but we can also maybe do something in Europe. Then obviously Seville come. Martin O'Neill was an incredible appointment. The Celtic team, that's the best Celtic team, strongest European class. You know, the fact that not just getting to Seville, but the way that we dealt with Blackburn Rovers and Liverpool and all that, you know, when Soonis was saying yeah. it was men against boys and all that rubbish, you know. <laughs> so we just ran steamrolled right up to the final. I mean, incredible. But Seville's another one, but that's a, that's a, separate, that's a separate one. But O'Neill and Celtic in that 6-2 game in that season, Incredible, and that was a party in Royston. I was telling you about in the Garden Guard. <laughs> <laughs> the six-two game, Des was the first uh, Celtic Rangers match that I covered for the Daily Record when I worked for them, and it was just you know that way. It was just you know you talk about like surreal experiences, and you're sitting there watching the team you love hammer their rivals, not just beat them, hammer their rivals, and you're being the consummate professionals, and you're. Outwardly, you're just like mm-hmm, taking it all in your stride. Inwardly, you're doing the silent screaming, aren't you? You're Edvard Munch. You're like, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around it, you know. And uh, and Chris Sutton, who wonderful when Chris Sutton signed for Celtic, great story that I had to do stakeout. And my next day, it was my my birthday, July the eleventh, two thousand. So Chris Sutton was there, July the tenth, and he, and I stood there the whole day. Staked him out, and he came up, and he and I said, "Are you here to sign for Celtic?" And he gave me that great line: "I'm not here for a look around." And he went mm-hmm. into the and he went into the ground, and he emerged about eight nine hours later. And he's like, "Are you still here?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Have you been to the toilet?" I'm like, "Nope." And he's like, "What do you want to know?" And I'm like, "Can you tell me everything?" And he just stood there, and he gave me, "I'm here, sign the deal, and all that." And he was really really kind to me. And then the next day, in the back page of the Daily Record, that. July 11, 2000, the Millennium Rec. I'm here to tame Jers. <laughs> he never he never mentioned Rangers once. <laughs> he just said no. he was here to win stuff. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> the, the headline's going to put he, he was fine with it. He was great. And, you know, so the 6-2 game and he scored twice. And then he was a Celtic player that was brought in. And I was designated to, to write the kind of spread. It's called A Thousand Words. And just my career's been intrinsically linked with him because he became a columnist with the record and all that so just a, a wonderful guy brilliant sense of humor and that's what i think of that martin o'neill team that was the benchmark that 6-2 game and then seville and everything that happened afterwards but and it was my first experience of working at a celtic rangers match and what do you say to that it's just unbelievable the demolition derby as it's come into known as folklore you know and that i mean if you were to look at that team, a lot of these players, if you were to say to people who are the best players that you've seen, you everybody would say Larson, Maravchik, yeah, 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 yeah. Martin, Lord, Big Sutton up front, and, uh, Hart, you know, uh, you know, a, a lot of the, uh, and a lot of these players, Mar- uh, Maravchik, Petrov as well was coming into form at that time. But a lot of O'Neill's signings were, you could say, even after that game, where when people mentioned their favourite ever players, it was at that era, you know, obviously. Apart from the Lisbon Lions and stuff like that, but these guys were the next, the next big guns, weren't they? That people yeah. say, oh, this player, that player, this player. But uh, it was just the fact that can O'Neill at that time, dem- you know, demolition derby, and we're thinking, can O'Neill go toe to toe with this Rangers team that if the money was no object, they'd, they'd, they'd won all those leagues, and then to go out there and it takes six off them. Yeah, it's just incredible. 
And that's when we realise, no, this is the man for the job. And I think they're uh, they're held in that esteem, not because of what they did domestically. I think, as you say, it's what they did in Europe as well. They went toe to toe with real big guns: Juventus, Bayern Munich, you know, Porto, Lyon, all these big clubs at the time in Europe with a real kind of pedigree. And they left Celtic Park with nothing, <laughs> you know, Bayern Munich and all that. They, they never get any change out of Martin O'Neill Celtic. And as you say, I spoke to John Hartson last week doing this very same thing. He said they were a team of men. Now, you can take what you want out of that, but I kind of knew what he meant. You know, they, they just weren't going to be trifled with, either home or away, and they could mix it. But they were great footballers, but they could go toe-to-toe with anybody that wanted to you know, come the physical stuff as well. And I think that's what... That that five years, it's just full, filled with joyous moments, isn't it? Martin O'Neill's era that you... And that's why I think they're lauded because they got to a European final. Should have, should have, could have won it, I guess. He I felt know. that they, they deserved it and it hurts that they didn't because it would have been a fitting way to remember that era. But the journey they took you on as well and just everything that they did. And you see, lots of people your age, that'll be their favourite players, won't it? They'll be their favourite team. It'll come from that. Moravchik, Larson, Sutton, Hartson, kind of well, that, Petrov, that was- Len- Lenin era, you know. That was your generation's Lisbon Lions. I mean, and do you know what? It would have been amazing to win that because they did all, I think they did all the hard work getting to that final. Yeah. Uh, amazing to watch. And yes, they were. Uh, it's all right saying, you know, we had a brick wall at the back, you know, Malby and, and Baldi and all that. And, and uh, But, but they, they were, but we had a lot of good football in that team too. But it was about oh, time. Yeah. And, and we, we, you know, we did stand up to teams and we were never, because Celtic were never really a big team back in the day. You'd only big, maybe big eight and stuff like that, you know, when it was up against. Yeah. I remember all from and stuff like that. So it was a uh, uh, back back then, but this was a team that had it all solid, you know, big big guys, but also you know you guys. Like La- I mean, we haven't even mentioned Larson's goal in that six two game. You know, it's, it, it is. I mean, there's been a lot of when you think back. Why is that everybody's favourite Celtic goal? Is it because of the occasion, the game, the the, the result? But it was just. I remember it was a a. a, a we documentary thing on about Larson, and there was like world class players were saying how amazing that goal was. The ball's trundling in front of him, and he just and he still manages to spin on it and stuff like that. That was like the way he nutmeg before that. Greatest ever Celtic goal, would you say? It's certainly up there, isn't it? I mean, it just depends how long your memory is or what teams you've watched, but I think uh, it's a thing of beauty. I'm sure I described it as a thing of beauty, and you cannot watch that goal without. Uh, Cares about it. Aye, without smiling or the, the, the memories that it evokes. And, uh, you know, I I just, you sort of looked at it. It was kind of suspended animation, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. And he just kind of went, he, he, he's just not my Bert Countryman and he's he's just like chipped a world-class goalkeeper as nonchalantly as that because it was a kind of, I, I looked at it and sometimes it's kind of it's kind of five or sides goal. It was just kind of you know it just it did what came natural to him, and you looked and you thought that's a special moment that's going to go down and, and utter folklore because because of the as you say the the occasion the game the score and just the way he went about his business and yeah <laughs> and I can understand why it's a lot of people's favourite ever Celtic goal. I find it hard to. Kind of you know that rationale, favorite ever, but it's got to be up there. You know, it's got to be it's, 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 it's a kind of goal you would see on a Sunday morning when a guy doesn't care if it's in or no. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a guy running, you know what? It's, it's, in. it's, it's the it's the guy that, that somebody says to you, he was on Celtics books as a kid, he's got the beard belly. Uh, you get a samvas on and he's just like I, 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 I used to I used to play a bit so you know it's it's must it's a Mr. Bojangles go in it. I, I used to dance a bit and I and I drink a bit and it's like, I, I could do it, but you know, he's like a Larson being Mr. Bojangles, you know. If Larson done that in training, you can see the Celtic like goalie chasing him like that, would you you'll be it's one of the ones, you know what? How do you like lobs and how do you for lobs? Bang, right there. Well. It was a five-a-side Sunday morning type, you know, a wee thing. If it goes in, it goes in. And then you're thinking, what a goal. But here's the thing. You you might remember this. You've got a good memory. You probably will. 
see all these Celtic nights that you go to the Q&A nights or a big Celtic yeah, yeah. Ballard Foundation night. When you and I were at that night down at Celtic Park where you asked Larson to sign 73 pages or whatever, um, <laughs> you, know, you remember when it showed you a montage of all the goals, right? Yeah, Which yeah. one get the biggest? And it always does. I know people could argue every single goal's uh, film now, right? And back in the day, or, oh, you know, Jinky scored this cracker, and I appreciate all that, and Dougalee scored this brilliant goal away. Did it. That, that's all fine and well, but nothing we can do about that. But the ones that we do see now, every time you're at one of these big nights and that goal comes on and they always yeah. leave it near the end because they know yeah, yeah. they know the <laughs> and when it comes on the whole place erupts because not just because it was that game it really is a world class finish yeah. you know and just the way that he runs with it nutmegs the cheek of the nutmeg and then oh do you know what else yeah. I'm going to pump the leaks in as well by yeah. lobbing it and I've made no business <laughs> lobbing that world class keeper so uh, everything about it was just it's just you're right every time you see it it's a Rocky Balboa moment. Yeah. You just go, the hairs on the neck and the tingles that got in your body, nobody will understand. I try and explain it to my wife, but you know, she doesn't get it. <laughs> and what Des was referring to is myself and Des were at a Celtic night one night, and I taken along, I described 242 Henrik Larson goals for the daily record pull out before he left. And uh, he he read it and he, his son loved it. He said that Jordan Larson he kept it as a souvenir. And, and I was sitting with a, an ink marker, wasn't I? And I'd got it laminated and I was sitting like that with Des and I was disputing in my head whether to go and see him or not because he was sitting at a table just across from us and he was sitting beside Alan Stubbs and I was saying to Des, I'm always friendly with Alan Stubbs. Should I, should I just go and use him? <laughs> As you said, it was like, it's too, too, too school voice saying, well, you got off with my pal, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, and you and I remember you saying to me, Tony, you have to do this. If you don't do it, you'll walk away from tonight and you'll regret it for the rest of your life. What's the worst they can say? No. Or he might okay. just do it and just, you know, but he said you, you have so Alan with that, I just sort of approached Alan Stubbs, said hello. Stubbsy was as brilliant as usual. And I said, Stubbsy, this is going to feel as if I'm, I'm using you here and I kinda am. I said, But can you introduce me to that man there? Because I've got something I would I would like him to do. And Stubbs is like, no problem, and he introduced me, and I showed him, as you say, the, the laminate page, I think there was about three or four of them, and, and mm. I said to him, Henrik, do you remember this? And he went, yes, my son loved it, great souvenir, he said, I'm sure he kept it, and I said, well, I said, I just wanted to tell you, I said, I'm the author, it was me that did that, I said, C could you sign it for me, please, I said, if you're not too busy, and he said, where do you want me to sign, he said, in fact, giving them all, he signed every page, and he put Henrik Larson 7, he but, uh, and I was like, fine. And as I got up to walk away, he started to commentate on some of the goals. And sure enough, he flicked to that goal and he kind of read it out to Alan Stubbs and then turned to Alan Stubbs in that kind of Bond villain voice, Swedish voice. He's got a poor bird countryman. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the, the three of us just burst out laughing. And I, I was just ever so grateful. But I was more grateful to yourself for actually sent to me to do it because I was genuinely like I didn't want to annoy him and, and you said to me Tony you'll regret this the minute you walk out of the stadium you'll think I had yeah. my pen at the ready and you know and, and it's all nice I just didn't want to annoy somebody who was at a dinner for it was actually sadly for a lady who used to do the laundry who passed away through cancer Angie wasn't it yeah That's it. and by the way I don't know about you but have you ever seen so many Celtic oh, legends in one room no, that was like, no oh, I that. haven't it was a wonderful turnout and Incredible. It, was, uh, it was an incredible night and just made all the more incredible because I, I remember my sports editor at the time, Ian Scott, who also is not, no longer with us, sadly, he walked around the desk and I remember shouting as he's walking around, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. And he went, you don't know what I'm going to ask. I said, I do know what you're going to ask. You want me to describe 242 Henrik Larson goals, don't you, for the pullout? And he was like, ESP, indeed. And I said, I, I said, come on, 204. I said, come on. And he said, do it. He'll love it. And it's always stuck in my mind. And he did love it. And because of him, I now have what I would deem a priceless souvenir signed by the man and himself. And he, these are things that you can't buy, Des. These are things where no. I said to you off air that they're just surreal moments in your life and your career. And i am always said that I'm fortunate and privileged to do what I do. I've always kept my feet on the ground about it. 
but I, I, it just humbles me greatly that you support a football club that can take you to these places, and I'm I'm, I'm indebted to Larson for doing that, and just in, just privilege and honour to be around that company at times in my life, and it's just wonderful. And uh, as I say, I've got it laminated. I need to get it framed, but I just look yeah. at it. You know, what you said something. You just look at things and you think, did I do that or did that actually happen? And it did happen, and I'm uh, delighted about that. I still remember saying. It's a no-brainer. You need to do this. Oh, one. oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And yes. and, and, you, right. and you remember how shy I was, oh. and reticent to do it. You really had to kind of grab me up off the chair and say, "Look, push me uh, towards uh, it." You know, it was you one of those moments. Yeah, right. would have something that money could not buy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Dirty old blazer. Right, we'll talk about that later. But no, no, Thank you're right. You Something that you couldn't go, oh, where can I find this on eBay? How much is it? But that money couldn't buy that now. It was a brilliant little, you know, memento as it was, but to get yeah, the king, to get the king to sign it, and it was so nice about it, and so laid back. And and that yeah, was a room of legends. We'll never be in that company again. No, never again. Yeah. It just shows you how and how much Angie was loved as well, you know. So, so um yes. So four was the Martin O'Neill era, the six two demolition derby. Now on to your Top well, three days, excellent. Well, the three would have to be still kind of we're, we're still uh, in the Martin O'Neill. It would have to be Seville. What an absolutely incredible! I mean, we, we mentioned we mentioned uh, Martin O'Neill's brilliant and Martin O'Neill's team's brilliant run in Europe, but Seville has to be a standalone experience. I will never forget. What is it? Seventy thousand, eighty thousand? Who knows, right? But what I do remember, it was just. Magical, it was a sea of green and white. Everybody was your pal that day. You were cuddling everybody. I still can remember going, look, we were on an open top bus going through uh, Seville and all that. <sighs> Deco, Deco, who the has Deco? I've edited that, but right. And all these, all these Porto fans were all like, who is this mob? It's as if we had already won. That was the thing. It was a, we, did, we had nothing to prove. We had an amazing run and we were all there. And it was, you know, the Celtic fans at their best at the finest you know there was what one arrest for you know some guy maybe and it, and it was just like that was that was celtic fans from everywhere the amount of planes that were taken off i remember sleeping in the motor um that night and so was everybody you know sleeping in doorways <laughs> everybody's just sitting about the weather was unbelievable you didn't need to worry you could sleep during the night with a t-shirt on you, you weren't and and the whole atmosphere the fact that it didn't happen for us what can you do about it? As you said, you know, it was it was a bittersweet moment, but you know what? We'll never forget the experience. By the way, Neil Lennon, Neil Lennon got me the ticket. I sat beside his dad. He got me the ticket. <laughs> well, oh, old Lenny, brilliant. he at, Lenny went along to a comedy club and and w- beside where he, uh, where he stays, and he came in one Sunday night, and he gave me a the golden ticket to come down to Parkhead, and <clears throat> and I was doing Billy Conley and all that in front of him all Lambert and. And then Larson, Larson was sitting there. I remember that going, ah, you know, do you do the gaffer? Do you do the gaffer? And I was like, you know, what can I say? You know, absolutely do the gaffer. You know, he's, he's an absolutely brilliant player. And and Le- Larson was laughing away. Ah, that's a good impersonation of the gaffer. No, he's always <laughs> he touches his glasses, you know. And I was there, and I was, I was doing, I like, get Celtic Park and all that. So uh, the board, yeah. So Lenny says, I'll get you a ticket for Seville, which was unbelievable. So we were sitting there. And I, I can't remember being in, it was like being in the set of Gladiator, wasn't it? See, that the, yeah. the, 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 remember how steep that was and looking yeah. around and going, this is unbelievable. The heat as well, you know what I mean? It was oh. Oh, it was just insufferable. But also it was, you're just expecting Russell Crowe to walk out, you know, just, just <laughs> the, the pitch of that whole stadium and everything, you're looking around. And it was just Celtic fans everywhere, and every bar outside. That we just—it was incredible. What an occasion! And we did come back with a massive, with a massive hangover in every sense of the word, you know. And it was just a shame because I just felt sorry for, you know, you feel sorry for Celtic, but Larson especially. I remember him, you know, and they did the silver medal, and he's like, I, "I didn't come here for this," you know. And you are thinking he deserved two amazing yeah. goals? If anybody deserved it, well, but Henry. You know, you just felt for Henry. You thought this is what he deserves. He, he could have went anywhere, but he stayed. You know, with yeah. Celtic for seven years. You'll never get that kind of loyalty nowadays. No chance. No. And I think he stayed. Um, I said this before. I, I think he stayed because I don't think he he could have upset or broke people's hearts after Seville. He didn't want it to end his Celtic career like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I've got a, 
I've got a feeling he, because she I had Celtic one the year for cup, I think he'd have left. Because he would have been bowing out on the ultimate high with Celtic. Yes. You can't do I, 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 I yeah. couldn't have done any more, you know. So I think he kind of stayed out of that loyalty as well and thought, can't lose the year for cup and then turn around and say, by the way, guys, I'm off as well. So that's Celtic supporter. I, I, I just think he genuinely felt for the club, loved the club and loved the supporters and stayed on another year and then bowed out a winner ended up in tears at the Dundee United League game and then got that out the road and then Scottish Cup final, business hat on as usual against Don Fairman and left the ultimate winner, you know. But uh, Seville was just... Uh, I mean, my story about Seville happened in the semi-final when Larson scored the winner mm-hmm. and I've left the Daily Record office and walked down to the, the William Hill and uh, Argyle Street, went to put a bet on Celtic to win. The odds are too short. Shove two quid, seven and a half thousand to one on 27, seven, 10, two, three, which was my, no. the numbers when my niece was born, first niece, and it's a daily lottery, five numbers, seven and a half thousand to one. I've walked back to the record, the draw's been made, I've phoned the number that you hear the numbers, and I've wrote, and the guy's going, well, the, the daily lottery numbers are whatever, 27, seven, 10, two, three. I've written it down 10 times and my pals looked at me and went, what's happened? And I went right down these numbers this guy speaks and he wrote them down and I showed him my ticket and he went, you've just won 15 grand, haven't you? And I went, I've just won 15 grand. This is before the Boa Vista game. So I've said nothing. I've, well, I've walked down and I've walked in and I went, it's you, isn't it? I said, yeah, it's me. And they're like, right, how do you want your money? And I'm like, well, I don't want it in a, a satchel in Argyle Street. <laughs> in, in Glasgow, I says, I'll take a check and the lad will come back tomorrow. That's fine. I've gone home. I've said nothing to my dad. And obviously the game takes place. Larson scores. We win. The two of us are in tears, going absolutely mental. And I said, do you want to go? And he says, I can't be able to afford it, son. He says, but you go. I says, we're going. And I show him the ticket. And I say, well, I've just won 15 grand. We're all going. So I took my dad, my brother. And myself and, and and we all we all went. Didn't all get tickets. I get ticket. I get a ticket. They didn't. They watched it in the the square and and Seville. But uh, yeah, it was just the, everything you'd ever wanted to do as a Celtic supporter. Get to a European final. But I've always said losing's not in the equation, is it? No, sadly, it's not. And you know what? But the whole the run was incredible. The yeah, team, yeah. It was just, you know, people writing us off as soon as, you know, men against boys and all that. Hartson's goal uh, against Aye. Liverpool, uh, uh, you know. But the thing is, I, I know that people are quick to say, oh, Kyogo's the, the next Larson and all that. No, no, you know, it's a, <laughs> never be another. We, I, I don't think we generation will see a player like oh. Henrik Larson. And when I, I, whenever I sit, when I was talking to Lennon and all that, I played the year nights like, and, and all these, you say to them, who's the best player you've ever played with in any team, any international? They're like Henrik, without hesitation. The football players are telling them this is the best player they've played with. Yeah. And then you don't realise until they went to Man U in Barcelona how much this guy was respected and revered. A world-class... It, you, you know, you can't really say world-class footballer in the SPL with many players because no. it's a bit ridiculous. No. But you can say it with Henrik Larson, no oh, yeah. question. I- and also, you Thierry Henry when Barcelona beat Arsenal, he's been interviewed yeah. and he said Arsenal didn't lose, we lost to Henrik Larson. Yeah, as he yeah. Said. yeah, you know. And Henrik Larson came on and turned that game around by setting up the two goals that Barcelona beat Arsenal in that final. And and I think when he got his hands on the cup with the big ears, as it's known, every Celtic supporter rejoiced because they were just like he he gave his all for the club. And that's the, the fitting kind of ending to his career because it was coming to the end. And I think every Celtic supporter felt that they'd shared that with him. And he should have had, you know, Paul Lambert always says that to me. It's, it's his regret that had he had they won the year for Cup, they would have had the two winners' medals from the two major European trophies that were around at the time. And I think someone like Larson deserved that. I think somebody like Lambert oh. as well deserved that. And and I think, you know, it's tinged with regret that way, but I think every Celtic supporter was so, so happy when Barcelona won that uh, Champions League that night and Henrik just sort of, you see him kissing it and you think, and you also flash back to Seville and 
the great what if moment, eh? You were just like you, you wanted it for yourself. And you said it earlier, and I've, I've all said as well. Seville was our generation's Lisbon, wasn't it? Sadly, the result was different, you know. I just didn't lift the cup. It's as simple as that. I was trying to explain to my wee boy, Harry, this is Harry's bar, and it named after Harry <laughs> Morgan, and he was asking about, you know, you know, so Larson, and I said, well, to put it in a nutshell, greatest ever Celtic player, in my opinion, world-class player, we were lucky to have him. You saw what he pinched yourself thinking, why, how, how did we have such an amazing player? But also, I was trying to tell him football's a funny old game. On his debut, he had a stinker. He gave the ball away. <laughs> People were saying in the football phone in the next day, we, we should stop this. We should swap this guy for Chick Charlie while we can. You know, <laughs> you remember that? You know, we'll never forget it. So it just shows you when you see a new player coming to Celtic or whatever, and people go, "This guy's a dud," or whatever. Always remember, Henrik never hit the ground running. Always remember that. And always remember that Henrik is the only foreign player and the greatest ever Celtic eleven, as voted as voted by the Celtic supporters. There you go. Yeah. He's the only well, that... foreign footballer in that lineup and the greatest ever Celtic eleven. And you, you understand why, don't you? He's such a modest man. I remember there's you you've probably seen it many times. He's sitting with Jinky and he and he was saying, you know, <laughs> I, I'm embarrassed to be mentioned in the same in the same <laughs> breath as this man. He, he genuinely was. He was so humble yeah. and so Sincere saying he shouldn't be mentioned along with, and it, it just shows you. But now, when you look back and you think, you know, who's the greatest player we've had since Larson? By the way, Maravchek was some player as well, world class, yeah. definitely. We got him from the age of 33 to 36. Imagine we'd got him at 25, 26. But when you think about it now, it's just a case of who's the second best striker we've ever had, you know, because <laughs> it's never ever got, it, there'll never be anybody as good as Larson. But you know, we Kyogo, he's he's nice to watch and he's he's a brilliant player, but come on, Larson's a man, isn't he? And that's it. Yeah, of course. You'll never see and it again. Nah. No, I don't imagine so. You live in hope, don't you? Lots of people say didn't think they would see uh a King Kenny again. Larson got the King of Kings moniker, so you always live in hope, don't you, that someday some new hero comes along. But these guys are, you know, they're they are what they are because of what they brought to Celtic Football Club, aren't they? It is funny though, you just saying that you never know who's around the corner. I was I was doing a corporate last week and there was a for a big corporate company and I was a, sat at a group and it was a Liverpool branch. It was all these and they were they were older, older guys and they're sick and they says when Kevin Keegan left Liverpool they thought yeah. that's it. We'll never find yeah. another mighty mouth, another and then suddenly this guy from Glasgow came, the leash and I went, Is he the best ever? And they says Best ever. So it just shows you when you write somebody off and you think it can't happen. Yeah. Keegan was brilliant. I mean, absolutely brilliant. But in my mind, they got 10 times the player than King Kenny. And King Kenny is a 10 out of 10 footballer every day of the week and twice on a Sunday. There is no argument with that. He is the last world class Scottish player. Definitely. that, That this country's produced. And I mean, you spoke about world class. He is the last world class Scottish player this country's produced. And and I'm so oh, we were talking. Yeah, yeah 77, he left Celtic. Celtic, uh, sorry, uh, Scotland has not produced a world class player since. And the true definition of the word, in my opinion, world class. If you guys that are close, you've had great players, but I'm talking about world class. People who, as you say, you spoke to those Liverpool supporters who will tell you he was just a genius. They loved him, a genius, and uh, he just, he, he, you know. Anyway, we've moved. This is the this is the danger. We're branching off into. Let, let's. That's let's all right. Let, we let, will get back on track. And I, your top two, Des. Top we are now at number two. So <laughs> let's hear what number two is. Then the way I've done my, my top five is I've done it in chronic, you know, and, and obviously it's from almost chronic order, yeah. Okay, so I've done yeah. it from past to present. So the next one, and I have to say. The man, I wouldn't say he's coming under fire at the moment, right, Mr. Rogers. And I know he's not everyone's cup of tea at the moment. And you and I said on our last Celtic Way podcast a few weeks ago, Brendan Rogers did not need to come back right, and take all this hassle, right? However, I was looking back this morning fondly at a few of Brendan's, my favourite moments that, he, that Brendan brought Celtic. And uh, they were all mostly against Rangers, you know. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lovely moment when Rangers 
There was a video where Rangers fans all cheered when they got Celtic. Remember that one in the semi final? Yes. <laughs> they were all got right. And Brendan went out and beat them 4 0 at Hamden. You know, I don't remember. And then, and then a few, two weeks later, it was April, wasn't it, 2018? Two weeks later, there was a 5 0 game. There was still, was it 30th? You know, yeah. the you know, seven minutes to go, it was 5 0 at Parkhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember did Forrest not rattle the bar for about 40 yards? And absolutely, we missed the goal. I remember running up and Roger had just scored in 47. Then it was 4 0, 5 0. It was incredible. So he answered, you know, his critics. Then, I still remember Roderick's brilliant goal and against Aberdeen the final, the Maisie run. Who can forget? You remember that that moment, three two Ibrox when he just he just stood there, cool as anything. <laughs> Murphy was standing, Murphy was standing there like that, like John McCurry giving it all that. You know, <laughs> Brendan just went. <laughs> I just thought that was you know you can't argue the guy. So I remember as well. It wasn't a Rangers game. I remember going down to a European game at Parkhead. Man City had won 11 games in a row, yes. And yeah, then they came up right. with Celtic, Mickey Mouse League team, three each. What yeah. a game that was. Dembele scored a couple. Yeah, twice, what a yeah. So uh, what a game that was. Even remember big, uh, was it, remember, was it Colo Turi at the end of it? Was that, remember he walked yeah, yeah. up absolutely knackered, done in. Yeah. That was one of his best performances in Europe. I mean, against oh, yeah. the side. So, so Rogers, there's a. It's obviously a triple or quadruple tiered Rogers here. But Rogers' era, the first time round, the double treble and all that. The football. I thought Celtic the first season. Sinclair had an absolute. But we played a year. Remember, and we, we Paddy Roberts and all this, you know. And, and they, they, they were just Dembele. Uh, Celtic were playing some football. Do you remember the incredible goal against St Johnson away? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. That finished oh, yeah. by. Uh, Dembele, I think it was. No, no, it was at Dembele. It was, it was, it was a, it was finished by Dembele. I mean, it was one of these goals that you watched on the Monday. You didn't realise how good it was, and uh, the football. We, we all talk about big hands, you know that, you know that, that. But you know some of the the times that Brenda brought us that first time round, especially yeah. against Rangers, especially when they were all getting cocky and hoping for. Uh, you know, it was just. I just thought it was brilliant. The double treble, 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 the bus going down Celtic way. You know. At that point, I thought this is really good football. We're sitting in a lovely position, and obviously he left, and oh, that's oh, that's. But I, I, those all those games at that yeah. time, that brilliant time. I remember getting along, and the football you're getting as well. Some of the Tom Rogic, he, he turned him in. I remember when he came, there was about four players that were when we get knocked out in the semi final, and the, the people were screaming for like it was like, he made Callum McGregor a player. Rogic came good. Scott Brown played the best football of his career. Forrest. You get yeah. the best of Stuart, the Stuart Armstrong as well. Armstrong turned into uh, a great player as well. So, you know, there was no question when Rogers came. It was brilliant football, a great team. We didn't have much opposition, but that night against Man City as well, and that game at Ibrox, we're, t- we're doing to 10 men, but we won 3 2. So many highlights in that two to three yeah. year period. They were really big, big. He, I think he played Rangers 13 times, was it? And won 11, drew one, and lost one. <laughs> yeah, so those stats say all oh, they're incredible and as you say most of the good times that he served up what came against Rangers didn't he there was a 5-1 a 5-0 a 4-0 you know they were just uh, two five ones actually home and away and yeah it was just that was an incredible time that invincible season was just an astonishing footballing feat because as you've seen on Sunday there you are the bounce of a ball or away from being knocked out a cup or losing, to, to, so to go the whole season and win them all, uh, I mean, that will never be done again. It will never be yeah. done again, yeah. you know, and so, amassing 106 points, a record uh, in the process as well, never be done again. I I, I don't think, I think, I think you're safe on safe ground to say that, that no club will win a domestic treble in this country by not losing yeah. a football match. It's it's not possible. <laughs> well, you thought it was possible. It is possible. Celtic proved it, but yeah. I don't think it will be repeated. Anything's possible with Celtic fairy tale club, and I forgot to mention there as well. Who can who can forget Dembele's debut in the five one game when oh, everybody's yeah, yeah. Griffiths is out. Griffiths is out. Dembele, who is this guy? We've not really seen much of him, and then he scored a hat trick. <laughs> I know it was a poor Rangers team, but it doesn't matter. You know, we had it for years. You know, during the of but it was. Uh, Dembele came in in a hat trick. That was absolutely magical, um, and, and it's still one of my favourite moments of that Rogers era. New, 
talked about that substitution. See that pass yeah. from Dembele to oh. Edward that just opened the hole of the Brimlin end up to Edward. Yeah. And the minute Edward picked up the ball, I knew what he was going to do. I yeah. don't know how the Rangers defender didn't know, but as soon as that opened up, and that was the reason that everybody said, yep, he threw on a forward because he said, no, we're not settling for a draw to each with 10 men. We can actually win this. Here's why. You go up there alongside your compatriot, you get a chance you're going to have to take it. And just that quickness of thought from Dembele, that that pass from the centre, it just opened up everything and you're thinking, well, go and do what you do, Edward, and sure enough he did it. And, you know, the goal that kind of ended 7,500 people being oh, in the oh. Brimland Road's end at Ibrox, to be honest. Not just them. The players were coming out that week saying, oh, we've got the measure of Celtic and all that. And then, once again, 10 men shut them up big time. Just like that semi-final when they put that video up, the mod cheering, we yeah. want Celtic. So, in that game at Parkhead, as I say, 5-0. Was it 30, 37 minutes to I go? I think something? it was right, something like that. Yeah, yeah, certainly a lot of minutes. Time. Three, or whatever, and they're going, this is going to be 9 nothing. And then, once again... <laughs> It was one of these games where I've spoke to many Rangers supporters who have said the same. They went, we thought that was going to be a 7-8-0 and we got away with it. And for, to, to them, for them to escape with a 5 nothing was actually some doing. But no, no, I, I just remember, I'm not going to... You'd be lying if you did not enjoy Brendan Rodgers coming here, 13,000. He didn't get 13,000 this time round. But it was magical times and all the games, when you look yeah, at them all. Of course. The, way, of course. the way that he won those, those trebles, he had a brilliant success rate. And the, the football that Celtic were playing, you know, they, they, they were amazing to watch at times. I, mean, I just thought that he brought so many happy times and big score lines against Rangers. And that Man yeah. City game was incredible. That was, was a wonderful game of football, that, yeah. I agree with and you. And sure. that night. That, that, you need to be games like that to prove that we're not just, you know, because about, ah, it's a poor Rangers side, ah, you're playing the Mickey Mouse, there's no in the league. And then to go toe-to-toe with Man City, who had won 11 games on the bounce, and yeah. Pep was this a great Celtic team. And we were playing, we were playing brilliant. And I did think, and I still think, people are saying, oh, you know, Roger's coming back with big Angie style. I just thought it wasn't a million miles away from the Ange, you know, mm. it, it, maybe yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. young Angie's, but I just thought with his pressing game and, and his aggressive style and stuff like that, we'll, we'll come good. Okay, we only need about seven players, but we'll get there in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> but we'll, we won't we'll, find, we'll find that out in the fullness of time, Des, indeed. Yeah. Now we've come to it. That was number two, Rogers' invincible season in that era. Yeah. Uh, Rogers, Mark one, and all the good times and all the the Rangers and games. That's what roll on, and that's yeah, yeah, correct, indeed. Well, uh, Rogers, one. Mark two, and number one. Dun, 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 dun. Drum roll, please. Go on, this take it away. I know it's coming, but I never right, tired okay. of hearing it. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, you describe this man, the man who this blazer belongs to, as a force of nature. The great Bertie Old. I was asked to, this has been the greatest, my, the last two or three years, this is it here, look, that's, this is Bertie's actual blazer. This is Bertie's actual blazer and uh, that he wore, you know, when he was there, uh, when he wore so many times, Celtic party, he wore it to Vegas, which will actually wore it in Vegas as well, playing the man. If somebody said to me, five years ago or during lockdown or at any point when I was a when I was going on that Celtic supporters bus but or when I was in Seville, Des you're going to be playing Bertie Old, the Lisbon line, the legend. You're going to be playing him in, in like like in in the theatre. You're going to be going to Vegas to play him. I would be like <laughs> no what, 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 you know how I don't no chance. That's just and then it, to to play Bertie Old and bend it like Bertie there's a, there's a wee flyer, a wee, a wee flyer. Right, right. So to play, to play, uh, this side down, this side. To play uh, Bertie Old and bend it like Bertie. Right, 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 right. You've probably seen it the logo everywhere. Um, not just a dream come true. It was you, Tony, that said this. If, if none of us, we all dream of pulling on the hoops and playing for Celtic and scoring a goal. We all dream about it. We all have that wee magical fairy tale fantasy. But to pull on that blazer is the next best thing. I'm playing Bertie and then not only are you going on going into the theatre, like the Pavilion Theatre and, and touring all over Scotland and all that, and it was amazing. 
But then to go to Vegas and to go to Donegal, two of Bertie's favourite places, he loved going to Donegal and the Celtic connection over there is incredible. But Vegas, he was Mr Vegas as well. But then for his family to turn round and you're worried because his family come along to see the show and that was the night when I, I was genuinely, oh, I was like, oh no, what if, what, if, what if they don't like this? What if I'm disrespecting Bertie? What if, what if I'm, you know, I, I need to get this bang on. I was really, really, that was the night where I was, uh, I thought, oh, come on. And it, ended, it was in Motherwell Theatre and I remember at the end of it, Bertie's family came down, his son Robert, Robert's wife Susan, they came down and he'd been, you could tell he'd been greeting, he'd been crying. I remember thinking, oh no, it's no, it wasn't that bad, was it? And he and he, he says, I loved it. You were you were just that was like my dad up there. You sounded like him. You you. Did. He says it was just you. Oh, I was just it was too much. It was breaking his heart. It was too much for him. His wife says he's been breaking his heart through that. And I went, oh my, that that shows you how powerful it was. And I went, honestly, you were so like him and sounded dead like him. He says you looked like him and when you were up there. And he said, what uh, what size of and amongst all this, I was massively relieved, right? Massively relieved, and I thought. That's that. His family. I'm getting the thumbs up. I'm getting the seal of approval. And he says, "What size are you in a jacket?" And I thought, and I genuinely never even gave it a thought. And I went, whatever it was, the size. Jim Orr, the writer, shouted the size. He knew. He knew like Jim is. And I still, <laughs> I just thought, you know, people say things and they go, "I thought they're a good idea," but it never really comes off. I never gave it. A, I was just so relieved that he enjoyed my performance. It was just all about just them, them giving it their their blessing. That was it. The next day, I will never forget, I'm standing up here in the house, up in Rob Royston, and it was about lunchtime, and I just got a WhatsApp little photo, and it was that. And he says, here's a present from my mum, from Bertie's wife. And uh, and I, it was that, and I'm looking at it going, a present? What? And I mean, that, what's that? A green green jacket, green green blazer? Oh, it's got a Celtic. And then I thought, no. <laughs> and then I replied, I went, really? And he was like, yeah, he says, that's yours. I thought you cannot, you can't get, you can't get. I mean, it's like this is Bertie's blazer. This is this is Bertie. This is like Hendrik Larson giving you his boots. Except, yeah. so this is it. I, I remember phoning my mother because you know, and I just remember saying, you know, Bertie, oh, Bertie's family, and she was like, what? I says honestly, she, <laughs> my wife didn't really understand. This is this is, but she was, and then I went down, and Robert, Robert uh, fitted me like a glove. Honestly, like a glove. And uh, I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. And then I, I wore it on the tour, and then I wore it to to uh, all over, and then wore it to Vegas. And oh, it was incredible. And I'll just show you. Look, I'll just show you here. I was expecting to. I need to put it in, and I need to get you know taken in or taken up or you know, <laughs> no, absolutely fits me like a glove. Look at that. Probably is, it. It's like Tiger Woods putting on that green, you know. And, uh, <laughs> So yeah. that's it. I am. People say, "How does it feel when you're up there?" Once you put this on, you feel like you feel like an Iron Man, a superhero. You're you're, I'm be you're Bertie when you're up there. And Big Jock would always say, "You have the ability to <laughs> entertain, to get them to entertain." That's what Jock would always say. And we had the ability to entertain. We had players, we had players with vision, with and it, you know. And then you, you just knew when you were out there. And all the Celtic fans are in front of you, and you walk out as Barry, and you're, you know, and you're doing the. Uh, I I can't I can't genuinely describe. It's like as you said, Tony. It's like somebody going, "Do you want to go and take that penalty, Tony, for Celtic in the final? Just put up, pull one of those hoops, and not take." That's what it feels like. That is what it feels like. I'm not joking. So, oui. and then my son came to see it in the Pavilion Theatre, and you're thinking the Pavilion Theatre, fifteen hundred odd people, you know, on a Saturday, and I got them all to do the huddle and all that, and it was amazing. The Saturday afternoon show was incredible. And my wee boy, he was, he's 12 now, he was 11, and he just said, Dad, I'm so proud of you. You were amazing. And that was it. And so, this again, this again, bit of that. I'm playing a legend. Of course. My sons were amazing, and that was me. I had a wee eyes oh, yeah. in the dressing room. I'm sitting there going, oh, this is too much. But that is a kind of thing, that's that's a dream come true. That's a fairy tale to go up there. And, and then you don't realise how big, how big, just just a much of a legend and how amazing a man, a character. And oh. do you know what the thing is? When I meet everybody from Vegas to Dublin, <laughs> yeah. they'll stop me and they tell me their Bertie story. And everybody, <laughs> every, you know, they all, they all think, well, Des, you know what, since you're, you're doing Bertie, I need to tell you <laughs> some all brilliant stories. And you, you go, yeah, 
Yeah, I, that's it. So and it's, and very, and it's coming to the Pavilion Theatre next February for the last time. That's it. And it's, it's just going to be amazing. I'd and you've agreed it. with me on this that we implore Celtic to rename the tunnel, don't we? The 1030 tunnel, because two of the greatest stories took place in the tunnel. <laughs> the singing of the Celtic song coming out at Lisbon and the infamous John Gregg quote about what bonus are you on? And also, and, and, I, and I've always said that Celtic should have the 1030 tunnel and then have like these wee expressions and witticisms. Can they play? Things uh, like that. Shouldn't they? they should have all that adorned on and the, the words to the Celtic song that he started on the way out the tunnel to face Inter Milan. And I just think there'd been no better uh, or fitting tribute to to Bertie Old, the 1030 tunnel. I still think it's a wonderful idea and I would love for Celtic to take that on board and, and turn it into that because He's synonymous, isn't he? He is Mr Celtic. He once said it was Billy McNeil that was Mr Celtic, but he's Mr Celtic. And uh, he, everybody, I, I, I wrote, I spoke to you and we did a, a big interview about you playing, Bertie, and I wrote that he was the, Bob Monkhouse was the one million joke man. Well, Bertie yeah. was the one million song and joke man, wasn't he? And he, Pope John Paul played to 250,000 people in Berlin. Yeah. Bertie Old did more supporters than that because everybody knew and loved Bertie Old. Everybody. In this blazer, there's a there's a wee there's a wee pocket here and it's it's got a burst. It's, it's got a pen because he signed. He wouldn't. He, he wouldn't. He never walked by him. Did it? Robert his son was telling me. The, the, it's all. It's, there's a purple. It's like ink there. All he says he would stop. He would sign. New days, the modern autograph is a selfie. He couldn't get enough of it. And that's you know that that's uh, no mean feat for you know <clears throat> Bertie getting on in life and he would still stand and but that takes it out of you but he was there with everybody. But you're absolutely right. That tunnel is a no brainer. The ten thirty tunnel with all the week. Well, that's magnificent. But can they play? Yeah. Entertain and all that. Yeah. Entertainment, entertainment, and and it would be amazing because you're right. You mentioned how uh, he's just a total. He's the greatest ever Celtic personality. I mean it. We mentioned Larson, great ever player and all that, but there is no bigger Celtic personality oh, yeah. ever. Jinky, <laughs> Jinky probably, you know, comes close, but I think Bertie, the fact that he was just a, he was an entertainer himself. Billy Conley said, mm. if, Bertie, if Bertie wasn't a footballer, he'd be a brilliant stand-up comedian, you know? And he's true, he's timing and everything, and, he, you know, wherever he was, you would see him, and if you look at all the YouTube videos in Bird's Bar, he would bury guys left, right, and center, with <laughs> Eckler's, He's, he, you know, the old industrial language. Got it. Even the players were all going, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> but the fire line, walking in late and stuff. He, he's a remarkable Celtic man. Ambassador, uh, legend, yeah, he, he, biggest personality of all time. Yeah, he bestowed the gift of Celtic on everybody that he met. Whether they wanted it or not was neither here nor there. He bestowed the gift of Celtic upon them and they took from that what they what they wanted to. But, I mean, and I've always often said as well, there's there's YouTube uh, footage of him with the greatest snooker player ever, oh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. And yeah. Ronnie O'Sullivan is just, he's awestruck with Bertie yeah. Old. He, he is in genuine awe of Bertie Old. And this is like the greatest player ever to pick up a cue and the world champion so many times. And, he, and he's just standing there. He's bamboozled. He's entertained. But he is loving being in Bertie Old's company. He was totally sold on Bertie, and he, yeah. you could see him laughing away uncontrollably. And he's like, Did you get much exercise? And I put my teeth in the morning, Sunny. And he's howling, laughing at it. He's like, Listen, there's my number. So come down to me. And he genuinely, it's only, oh, yeah, yeah. Glad you missed that. It's only for maybe two or three minutes. You get it on YouTube, Bertie meeting Ronnie O'Sullivan. But that was just Bertie with anybody. It doesn't matter if you're yeah. a world champion, anybody. Bertie had that instant likability. And, yeah. and, and he, there's a line in the Bertie play where he, and somebody goes, Mr. Old. And he goes, just call me Bertie. Only referees call me Mr. Old. And that was Bertie. <laughs> Everybody wanted to just always call him Bertie. He's always your pal. He'll always feel like your pal. He'll always ask about you, how you're getting on. It was never me, me, me. And it's hard to believe that he was also a brilliant footballer and a Lisbon line, apart yeah. from the fact he's a fantastic man and, and Mr. Celtic, as you you quite rightly said. He was Mr. Celtic. Incredible. An honour. That's the biggest honour ever to play a man like him. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but that's been almost 70 minutes of green and white gold. 
I just can't thank uh, Des McLean enough for giving us his top five Celtic moments. You cannot top playing Bertie Old. Can he? And the- Maybe there's a couple of them. I've just got Fivar. There's a couple of bits we need to do here again. I'm always old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. it doesn't get any better than that. And you see Des there sporting and wearing the most wonderful and treasured souvenir which money can't buy, wouldn't buy. And the memory he's had playing Bertie past few years has been incredible for himself. But I think you'll agree, everybody, that uh, the last 70 minutes have just been wonderful. It's been great sharing that with you, Des. It's been a great laugh, but just the memories that evokes and, and everybody's memories, top five Celtic moments are different, but that's been sensational, sir, and I've really enjoyed that. And I thank you so much for coming on. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I always enjoy getting a blather with you. And uh, I hope that, you know, the, the viewers and the, all enjoyed it too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they will. And before you go, as we always do, strap line running along the bottom, guys. Subscribe to the Celtic Way website and help support top quality journalism covering the club you love, all for the click of a button. It's £4 for four months, guys. That's the deal at the moment. And you just click www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. <clears throat> this has been Tony Haggerty with the Celtic Way sit down. Top five Celtic moments with one of the best comedians on the circuit, Des McLean. Thank you so much, Des. Really appreciate it. Thank Cheers, you. Thank you.